Hey there, viewers. Welcome back here to the uh, Caddy Daddy Shop. And what we're going to talk about today is some questions that, come, that have come in. And we're going to also talk about uh, some parts that have been returned to us damaged. So what we're going to look at today is this um, center bearing that was returned is um, to us damaged by a customer. It's, I think from a 59 or so. A lot, of, a lot of years have similar parts. And when they were trying to install the bearing, press the bearing into the housing, they did not support it properly on the back side. You need to support this inner piece of steel. You can't support it out here because this is rubber. And you'll just, and what'll happen is, as you're trying to press it in, you'll tear the whole thing up. Let's go ahead and get set up over in the press and I'll show you how this is done. So here we are over at our press. And what I'm gonna show you how to do is how to properly remove this bearing from this housing. It's unlikely that you will ever really do this with this particular part. This is just more of a general how-to. And what we wanna do is we have the outside race of the bearing is pressed into this housing. We need to support the housing, which means this area here, which is the steel, same piece of steel that the, the uh, race is pressed into. And from the back side, we need to get in here with a, 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 just whatever we have around. You can, this is out of a ball joint um, kit. This is one that we made for doing um, lower control arms in the 59. When you're using a press, you end up having to make an improvised uh, tooling. Uh, large sockets work. You know, you go to a garage sale, see some beat up old sockets. They work pretty good for doing this light, light duty pressing work. Whenever we're dealing with the bearing, we want to apply the force from the press to the race that we're interested in moving. We want to press this outer race out of the housing. We don't want to press on the inner race. If we apply force on the inner race, then all the force that we're applying has to go through the balls to get to the out, outer race. So if you're planning to reuse a bearing, you can, you can damage it. You can gall the, the, the races. You can do all sorts of uh, damage to them. And it's also dangerous. You're building up a lot of force, and if one of these races cracks, the balls are gonna come flying out of there at real high speed. Be like you're on the business end of a 12 gauge shotgun. You don't wanna be there. So we always wanna be careful where we press. We want to apply forces only to where we need the force, and we want to back up the other side where it needs to be backed up by. And when we go to install the bearing, I'll show you exactly what somebody did to destroy this one. So I'm going to go ahead and get this set up in the press, and we'll go ahead and press this out just for a demonstration. So this is a um, ring that we made for doing the rear suspension on the 59, and it fits good for this provides support to the, uh, to the housing and has clearance for the bearing to drop through. And on the other side, we got our little cup here and I put a little spacer on the inside and that fits right down in there nicely for us. So what we have to do is get everything lined up under the ram. So get the top centered and then we have to get this bottom ring not much clearance, so it has to be kind of carefully placed. And so now we can start to apply a little force. We're going to go easy. That's one thing is we never want to use too much force. Let things start to move, moving real easy. And it all drop clear with a bang. out. So we can retract the, the ram a little bit. Don't get too overexcited and let it go up all the way because it takes a while to pump it down. So kind of leave it where we can work with it again. So we can see real good here the, the damage that's been done to this and just simply from pressing improperly. So we'll just go ahead and show you where this part needs to be supported. 
Somebody just took and had it sitting like this, set it down on the press, and started pushing the bearing in. Well, all they did was push this inner ring free of the rubber. Just tore it right loose from where it was. You can see there were, the rubber is actually torn. It stayed vulcanized to the metal. What somebody needed to do was to come in with a part like this ring. This is something out of a, a ball joint kit. Uh, pipe fittings, all sorts of things can be used. We're not applying much force at all, generally, with this type of uh, press work that we're doing. This goes in and hits on the inside of this flange and supports this cup fully and free of the rest of the carrier. So what we'll do is we'll get our um, new one and go ahead and um, press the bearing in and show you how that's done. So now what we're going to do is we've got a new bearing, we have a new housing, undamaged, and we got our um, steel ring, and we got one of these um, bearing and seal installers, which fits the outside pretty well, and it also has clearance in the housing. You never want to use something that's a little bit too tight because you don't want to get your um, your um, backing plate here pressed in. It needs to have clearance, so always check. And a little helpful hint is if you got some old an old bearing already, maybe it's from some other car or something else, you can take a race, or grind it down on the grinder so it just would slip in. And you can use that as an item to press with or to back up with. Any, anything works, you know, as long as it can take the forces involved. Like I say, we're not using a lot of a uh, lot of heavy force. So we drop that ring in the back, so we're supporting this, so we don't tear it up. We can set the bearing in the housing. Try to get it in there as square as we can. Put that over the top. Now what we're looking at here that's kind of important is we want all the force on that ring that we inserted. We don't want this housing touching at all. So we have to kind of move our plates over a bit. So now we're lined up. We can begin applying some force. We just want to go gentle. We want to watch everything. Just slide in. The pressure on the pump comes up abruptly or movement stops or the um, bearing is going crooked, stop. Stop what you're doing and reason out what the problem is. Why is it binding up? Maybe when you're pushing something out, um, like when we were pushing it out using this ring, maybe this ring wasn't centered properly and one corner of the bearing's hitting it. So if something's not, if it doesn't feel right, if it's not going smoothly, stop and take the time to figure out what might be wrong. And once you get it started like this, you want to stop and take a look, make sure everything looks like it's going in square and straight, which it is. So we can continue. And this is hardly taking any force at all. Once again, we're not even registering on our meter, our gauge. Now, you have to just feel for when it seeps down all the way. It's still going very easily. You can see. How e now I'm starting to get some resistance. So that tells me that it's probably bottomed out. That it's where we want it to be. So I'm going to back up the ram a little bit. I'm going to slide this out. I'm going to take a look. And we're pretty close. Just a little bit more. And I think we'll have it. in there like that. I think that'll about do it. So we've pushed the bearing in there, not damaged it, not damaged the, the carrier at all. Everything looks good. So, all that's left to do is put the clip in there and 
mount it to the, the drive line if we're actually putting this back into a car. So I hope this um, addressed some uh, questions and concerns some of you viewers might have had and that you found this helpful. Fine Village is a great organization that gives back to the community. Check it out. You'll see so as well. Thanks for watching. Hi, my name is Son and Kirsten. We're here at the 2018 Vine Village Celebration, our major fundraiser here that helps fund programs that we run for people with developmental disabilities here in the greater Napa community. Vine Village was founded by my family and another family, each who had children with disabilities in 1972. And we depend on donations from all sorts of foundations and individuals and businesses throughout our community to help fund these programs and this is our biggest fundraiser of the year. You can donate by clicking the link in the video description.